Hi all, this is going to be a guide covering pretty much every aspect of shipbuilding, from how to set up ships, the different stats associated with different modules, how to best lay out your ship's weapons for the best DPS, where to find different modules, all that stuff. Um, the reason I'm making this guide in this giant format, because this is going to be a long video, is that there are a lot of aspects to the ship making uh, that a lot of people I see online just don't seem to quite grasp. I've seen a lot of ship builds people do that, while they look amazing, the modules that they use are nowhere near optimal, um, and I get it for aesthetic purposes, but I think there's a lot of stuff about, especially the weapons, that people don't understand. So, uh, just so you know right off the bat for credentials here, um, I'm the guy who on Reddit made the Excel sheet compiling the DPSs of all the weapons in the game for the starships, um, including all the hidden stuff like how some have magazines, reload speeds, stuff like that. And then also I made the guide for all of the have interiors, just where I photographed them all so people could see what they were getting into. So. Before we go into each section, um, I'm going to be cracking this up into segments covering each part of shipbuilding. So, habs, cockpits, shields, guns, etc. If you are a person that is overall like you know intimidated by the shipbuilder, which is a common sentiment I've seen amongst people, um, don't worry. There are you know there are tons of builds out there, people showing you how to make exact builds. Uh, I've already got one up on my channel. My first one, which was my Deimos battleship, that uh, probably not as condensed as it could be, but it was mostly me just kind of rambling about my design process to help people, you know, make their own stuff that's unique to them. But if you are not a person that feels comfortable designing your own stuff from scratch, uh, I would still highly recommend checking out the individual segments of this video, which I'll have time stamped, so that you can see how to do the modules. Uh, because there is an upgrade menu in Anything shipbuilding, and okay, it is no not good. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> so this is the demo ship I made for this. Um, I wanted to go for a Nova build because I feel like it's kind of the most Starfieldy. It's their NASA punk aesthetic in its purest form. So I made this ship to show you guys all aspects of the shipbuilding process. And the first thing I want to show you here is this upgrade ship button. Uh, this thing sucks, and I, I beg you not to use it. The reason for that is, is that it lets you go to each module, and it allows you to upgrade them. Uh, but the problem is that it doesn't work very well, because there are a lot of modules that are different shapes and sizes. So for instance, if I take this shield generator here, I can only upgrade it to the same shield generator, because this is mounted on a top point. And there are some shields that have to mount to the sides of things, so you don't see those here. Uh, same for the engines. There are so many engines that have different footprints, so for this, they only show you the exact same model. So you could have a shield or an engine or whatever that is much better than the one you currently have, but if you hit upgrade, you're not going to see it. So even if you're just upgrading modules and you're leaving the overall aesthetic of a ship the same, I still highly recommend using the ship builder. And I will be giving you guys some tips on how to use this because I know people struggle using the strip, the ship builder, especially because I think a lot of it is people are not used to using like 3D modeling software or anything like that. Um, and I've noticed people struggle a lot with getting things to stick where they want. So I've got some assistance in that field as well. So let's get into the very beginning of this here. So this is going to just be core concepts of ship building. So a thing that you all need to know is that there are different manufacturers for all the pieces. This usually correlates to aesthetic. Now, there are manufacturers for guns, shields, cargo, and overall I feel like that is less important. The aesthetic designers, the ones that make the structural pieces, the hab modules, and the cockpits, along with landing gear, um, those are a lot easier to understand and a lot more important to the overall like look of your ship. This is divided into the following. So there is Nova, there your classic NASA punk as shown with this build here. The Frontier also that we start with is made out of almost all Nova parts. 
Um, so Nova stuff is typically white, uh, kind of blocky, looks like the old NASA spaceships that we are using, well, actually right now. <laughs> So you'll notice some themes with them include having these big radiators on top of things, these uh, top mounted ones as well that look like solar panels, um, and then also this kind of, I would I'd say bulbous design. Uh, they, they lend themselves towards more of a thicker design, but also they have a lot of struts. They love pipes, they love things that are kind of, I'd say not armored, more uh, utilitarian. Uh, the other designers are going to be, we'll start off with the first one that you'll see after Nova, and that is Deimos. So Deimos stuff, I'll show you a hab here for that. Deimos is the military contractor for the UC. Uh, they have a dark gray and orange color scheme on all of their stuff. It is what the other build I've got on my channel is made entirely out of Deimos parts, or 99%. There's a couple utility pieces in there that are important. Uh, Deimos makes a very militaristic, more future-esque sci-fi. I would describe it as space tactical. Um, they also lean into having the orange, the same as the radiators that Nova has. They have a lot of accent pieces in their structural. Um, you'll see here they have like that radiator, which I think looks fantastic, and they have a lot of wing segments that you can use to add fins onto your vehicle. Um, so if you're looking for a more militaristic look, which a lot of people like, uh, I recommend Deimos. Next up, we have Who's next? Who's gonna be next on the list? Hope Tech. Okay, Hope Tech, space trucks, space trucks, and industrial. I I really like Hope Tech's pieces um, because they, while you can make a solid Hope Tech build, I feel that they can bring a lot to other aesthetics because they have so many little tiny pieces like piping, uh, these forward bumpers, these giant radiators that would fit perfectly on a demo ship. Um, so these pipeworks that they have that add to this industrial look work fantastic. Um, so overall their whole motto is that they make trucks in space, but I think they also make very good pirate builds because their halves have a very uh, trashy interior, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, like an example would be the Hope Tech Workshop. Uh, is a big empty room with all the workbenches in it. And they have a table that is literally like two fold out ladders with a piece of sheet metal laid across the top of them. And it's like crooked. So it's a very, um, a very lived in and slapdash approach to interior decoration. Uh, and that brings us into a important aspect about it, which is that uh, the interiors of Habs are not displayed in the ship builder. Now, like I mentioned before, I have a gallery up on Reddit of all the interior pieces. Um, feel free to look at that if you want to know what things look like before you place them in, but know some caveats. For instance, there are doors that will spawn on the sides of Habs that are connected to each other, and whatever was there will get removed to make way for the door, so the layout can get scattered around a little bit. Importantly, know that uh, there are not going to be pictures of certain halves on my guide, which some people have commented things saying like, why, like you are missing all the Tayo halves, which I'm not <laughs> because the I, I put in the beginning of that post that there are three you fully unique interiors because there are five aesthetic manufacturers in total, and there are four of them that are in pairs, where they share interiors. So as an example, Hope Tech and Tayo have like 99% identical interiors. The only difference is the color of the floors and walls and some minor decorative objects. So like there might be like an object on a table in the Hope Tech one that's not in the Tayo version. But the main difference is that Hope Tech is black interiors and Tayo is white interiors. 
Same thing for Stroud and Deimos. Stroud Eklund ships and Deimos have the same interior, but Stroud has white floors and walls. Deimos has gray ones. And then Nova is entirely unique. Um, honestly, I think this might have been time constraint on Bethesda's part, because uh, Tayo especially does not make any sense, because when you enter the Tayo showroom, everyone comments on how fancy and sleek Tayo ships are, and they act like they're this like fancy luxury brand. But then they share an interior with Hope Deck, the industrial trucking brand that has garbage everywhere, and their seats look like they tore them out of the back of a car and just laid them on the floor. Uh, so it's it juxtaposes heavily with what they say their design is. <laughs> so, important to note that. So if you are wondering what a Tayo interior will look like, just look at the Hope Tech version and then imagine it white in your head. Same thing for Stroud Eklund. I took a picture of all the Deimos ones, look at it, imagine it in white, and that will be what you'll get. So, continue on with the overview of the manufacturer. So Hope Tech is your industrial trucking foundation. And then after that, we have Stroud Eklund. Stroud Eklund, uh, Stroud is run by one of the members of Constellation. The CEO of Stroud works with you on a couple missions. Um, and I would describe their look as a very clean, high-tech sci-fi, exterior-wise especially. It's very smooth. They have some amazing structural pieces for building larger ships because they have some giant cover pieces that add great curves to a ship and cover up things that you don't want to see on the interior. Uh, I would say probably they've got some of the best utility for making large ships, but again, that's only coming into play if you're only using one designer, like I've done in some of my builds. I absolutely recommend combining different manufacturers' pieces to make a look that you like. And then our final one is Tayo. Tayo has a couple quirks to it. Um, very round and bulbous ship design. And you can see this because they have way more Habs listed than anyone else. And that's because they have a lot of variation. So number one, you will get variants of type A and type B, like shown here. These are the exact same Habs, but the difference is the type B ones have slots on the side for doors. Uh, you don't have to have doors there, but they can connect sideways. Or if you don't want to allow doors to spawn and you just want to make big hallways, that's actually a very nice utility of Tayo pieces, is that you can select these Type A variants and just make a hallway that way because you won't have doors if you put them next to each other. The other aspect is that they have top, mid, and bottom variants. So you'll see this one is a top variant, and you can tell because it is curved at the top and then flat on the bottom. And then they have a mid variant that is like a cube. And then you have a bottom variant that is curved on the bottom. So you can stack these halves on top of each other to make a big tube design, or you can combine it with their structural pieces. Uh, it lends itself to more of a kind of retro Japanese sci-fi design where everything kind of looks like giant bulbous submarines in space, which honestly is a cool aesthetic. <laughs> Um, I just wish that their interiors were more reflective of their brand and Ryujin ownership. But so those are your main designers. Nova, Deimos, Stroud, Hope Tech, and Tayo. So I would say you probably want to pick one of those to be the basis for your Habs so that they all line up. And then also focus on one for your exterior aesthetics. This will make your ship have a more kind of uniform aesthetic. But we will go more into depth on that once we get to the actual structure tab. This is just the beginning part where I wanted to let you know that this is a core part of shipbuilding, that there are different manufacturers that make different aesthetic choices. The other thing I want you guys to understand about the shipbuilding aspect is how to actually navigate in here. Now this is going to be more for PC because I don't know the console commands as well, although I do know some that are important that I'll point out in a second. But let me show you some basic things. So number one, people struggle a lot with getting things to stick to each other. I get this. So I want to show you something. The Z, or sorry, the Y axis over here is super important. Wherever you are on this Y axis, which is currently zero, aka the middle, the base, is where things will spawn if you spawn them in. So if I'm placing this here, it is spawning at the zero level. If I go down, 
then it's going to be spawning at negative one and so on. Things like to stay at their current level. They can't just detect like I want it to stick to that circle that I'm aiming at with my mouse because you're in a 3D space and they don't know what the, like, the depth that you're aiming at is. So what you want to do is either spawn things at the level you want or when you grab them change it from there. So for instance if I have this it's going to stick really easily right there because it's on the same Y level already. However if it was say down here it's going to be a little bit harder. It, it wants to go down. So what you do is, it does, and also it doesn't matter what level you're on, it only matters what the object is on. So like, I can be all the way up here, and it still doesn't want that, because this is where this object lives. So what you want to do is, if you wanted to place this from there to there, grab it, hold it, and then start going up in the Z levels. Now it loves it. It sticks right on. Another tool you can use in order to attach objects is you can attach things directly to a mounting point. So let me show you that. If I aim here at that mount point, on PC I can hit G to attach. On console, this is where this keybind is, and the one that I know for console because I looked it up for this because people kept asking about it. Left trigger plus right trigger plus A allows you to do the attach function. And what that will do is it will only show you objects that can be mounted on there. Now, some things might not fit. Like for instance, if I grab this three by, th or uh, yeah, this one right here, it's trying to place it where an object already is, so it can't. But for a lot of things, you can use this in order to see like, oh, what aesthetic piece will fit on here? Well, I'll go to the structural tab and I'll start flicking through stuff to see what I think will look good. Or, for weapons, if you're going over a weapon mount point, which, another important thing to note, there are three mount points in this game. There are circles. Let me see if I can find one here. I'll just move that. Circle, as you can see there, and that means a structural mount point. You can put halves, shields, engines, structure pieces, whatever you want on there. And then there are weapon, or quote-unquote equipment hard points, which are squares like that or that. So if you want to put a weapon on, just mouse over that square hard point, hit attach, and then you can look at all the stuff you have available to you. Now in order to give you guys the ability to see the things, the various options, um, I am using a mod right now that allows you to have all the ship parts at a single ship technician. Um, I'll leave a link to this in the description of the video. This is a very, very simple mod to install, so even if you're intimidated by mods, I'd still recommend this one as a pretty easy one for PC users. It literally just involves you dropping a text file into your um, Starfield install folder directory, going up to the ship technician, open the console, clicking on him, and typing in a little command. And then it gives him everything forever. Um, so note also that there's no way to remove it right now. So that ship tech will permanently have all the stuff available, which if you select the one that also gives you the ability to see the station parts, which are not stable, you, uh, you, you might be stuck with a little cluttered UI for a while, so heads up on that. But that's what I'm using for this, and that's why you'll see that I have access to like every single equipment in the game right now. So that's an important thing for attaching objects. And then the final mount point is the one for doors, which is that. It is a doorway with an arrow going in. The same on top. You can see there's a little hatch there with an arrow coming in. So you know if you are attaching halves together, they have to have those doors touching each other in order for it to function properly. And so you don't get issues with things saying like a hab is unreachable, the cockpit is unreachable, so on and so forth. Just make sure that you have the arrows connecting everything. All right. <clears throat> Next thing to note is that while I am using this mod to have everything unlocked, you will not most likely so you want to know where to get things. Now, this is detailed on the Reddit guide I've got along with this, which will also be linked. But there are manufacturers that have headquarters. So each of those main manufacturers I mentioned has a headquarters that you can go to and you can buy their special unique parts from them. E.g. the bridges. Every manufacturer has a bridge so much larger than their normal cockpit that can only be bought at the manufacturing headquarters. So for Nova, their headquarters is technically shut down. So if you want Nova parts, go to Titan. 
almost everything in this build can be purchased at Titan. The only thing I'm not entirely sure about are the gun and engine choices and the reactor, but we'll see about that later. But Nova, if you want to get their unique bridge and their unique landing gear um, and some of their larger HABs, e.g. Uh, if you look at the HAB section, you'll notice that there are larger versions than you'll see in other places like the 2x2s, the 2x3s, um, and the 3x3s for some of them. Uh, those larger HABs can only be purchased at the manufacturer. So for Nova, it's on Titan. If you want Deimos, you go to the Deimos Star Yard that is orbiting the moon of Deimos that orbits Mars. So go to Mars, go to Deimos. If you want Stroud Eklund, um, you the easiest way is just to go to Neon. Um, they have a showroom there. Uh, there's a console on the wall you can go to, interact with that, modify your ship, and you'll see their bridge and landing gear and big halves. And then finally, Tayo, also on Neon. Go to the Ryujin Tower, take the elevator up to the Tayo showroom. There's a saleswoman in there. Uh, and for Deimos, uh, you have to walk into the station and go down the stairs. There's like a, a salesman guy that you have to talk to. And then finally, you have Hope Tech that is on Hope Town city that is basically built around the company um don't talk to the ship tech on the landing pad he does not have all the parts what you want to do is you want to go inside the hope tech building right in that first room um i believe down on the right side there will be a salesman talk to them say hey i want to look at ships i want to modify my ship and then from there you'll have access to their unique options as well some final little building tips here uh, another issue a lot of people run into is they do this huge ship design and they get to the very end and there are two big issues they run into. Number one is the error saying an object is disconnected, which is awful. But there's actually a very easy fix for this. If you double click anything on your ship, it will select every object, which if you want to do that manually, don't know about console players, but you can hold down control and left click on multiple objects. This makes it very easy to repaint things. So if you want to paint your whole ship at once, double click it. If you want to paint a couple things, double click it. But the thing is, it will only con it will only select connected objects. So for instance, if I remove these and I double click this, it's only going to select this part because it's not connected to the ship. If I double click that, it will select the rest of the main body here. This is useful because if you have a disconnected part, you can double click your ship and everything will be highlighted except the disconnected part and then you can just slap it back on very easy and then same thing for the painting if you want to paint everything select your ship at the end hit the paint button which is j on pc and then go from there so that is i think all the stuff i wanted to cover for the initial like basic building tips before we get into the actual like core sections here so let's get started with the beginning of doing a custom ship so for something like this i think that the best way to start any ship design is with your habs because you can build the craziest looking ship you want but if you actually plan on using it it's going to really suck depending on how you lay out the habs because anyone that has done ship building can tell you that habs are not fun to deal with with their doors and ladders it is seemingly random there i have not seen anyone that has found a reliable way to like predict where it will place doors and ladders the only rule we know of is that it makes sure a room is reachable so there has to be a path to get to a hab but that doesn't actually mean anything if you're having a bunch of habs in a block for instance in which it will start randomly placing doors between them so for this build what i did is i wanted to make a two-story design even though a lot of people are not a fan of that um for good reason because the ladders are not fun to use although i will say if you get good enough frame rate that it's not a hassle um you can just jetpack up the ladders you don't actually have to climb the ladders i know i never do but I wanted to take advantage of the Nova Bridge. The Nova Bridge is fantastic. It's 
field of view when you're sitting in it is amazing. You have no obstructions. And it is the only bridge in the game that has two floors to it. It has an upper floor and a bottom floor, and you have doors on both. And there's a staircase connecting them, meaning you don't need to use any ladders to get around two floors if you use the Nova Bridge. So that's what I did here. I stacked up two halves down here, and then I stacked up two halves up here, with the idea being that down here I've got the armory and a control station. Um, I like the control station, it just has some chairs in it for cruise stations, it looks like the kind of heart of a ship, so I like having it right in the middle, and then the armory going into the bridge I like because the Nova armory has these big cages in it. Um, so it kind of feels like, you know, it's a secure bridge having an ar the armory directly outside of it. And then on the second floor, I have my captain's quarters and a workshop. And I like that because it means it's not in the way of everyone's stuff. I don't like having the captain's quarters where everyone's walking through it. Um, so it's kind of a private area for me where all the main stuff is down here on the bottom floor. But then if I go upstairs from the cockpit that I'm sitting in, I can go right back to my room and workshop for, you know, modifying weapons, armor, all that. This is a good time to mention a question I get a lot on the HAB guide, which is people asking where they get the different HABs because they'll say things like, I've been looking everywhere for the workshop and no one's selling it. Um, which is unfortunate because every ship tech in the game sells it. Uh, so let me show you guys how to deal with that. So when you're looking over here at the HABs, you'll notice that there are little tabs here underneath all of these. These represent variants of the same object. So for instance here, this is the Stroud 2x1 uh, two all-in-one. Every manufacturer starts with an all-in-one. If I go right or left, which you'll notice there are tooltips down there for saying next variant, you can see we've got the B-type, the armory, captain's quarters, computer core, control station, infirmary, living quarters, science lab, and workshop. They're all here. Every ship tech in the game will sell all of the 2x1 halves and the 1x1 halves and the 3x1 halves. These are, I would say, the generic hab types. The manufacturers vary by location. Obviously, the headquarters will sell whatever theirs is, but it seems that the owning faction has an effect for the normal ship tech. So, for instance, if you go to New Atlantis, you're in UC territory. And thus, they will be selling Nova parts and Deimos parts. If you go to Aquila or other Free Star locations, they will be selling Hope Tech, Tayo, and Stroud. The other option for shipbuilding is to make a shipbuilding pad at your outpost. This will give you access to a mix of everyone's stuff, although you still will never be able to get access to the unique manufacturer things, such as the bridges and the large halves and such. For whatever reasons, you only get those at the headquarters. So note that for if you are trying to find specific parts, but the two by ones will be found everywhere and you can pick pick where you want to build your ship based on what aesthetic you're going for. So pretty much New Atlantis and Aquila will carry almost every shipbuilding part in the game between the two of them. The only things that they're missing is pirate parts and then headquarter specific things. So for this build, I decided I wanted to go for these ones purely for aesthetic purposes. Back here, in the back, I'm going to strip this cover off. Whoops. Um, there is a two by one all-in-one for Nova, which another question people ask is specifically about the starting ship having a unique hab. It's called the Frontier, uh, the Nova Frontier module. I wanted to let you guys know that don't worry about deleting it. The Frontier is not actually unique. It is actually just a Nova Galactic all-in-one type A, uh, except it has Barrett's logs in it. 
which will appear in your inven ship's inventory constantly when you are redesigning it. So don't worry about deleting it. It's the exact same hab, but with some unique lore items in it. So back here, I have the same one, the all-in-one. And then I have it connected out here to a type B all-in-one, which has beds in it for Nova, which I wanted people to have a place to sleep. And then an infirmary so that I have the last workbench I need. That is because the workshop, which I think is one of the most important modules that you can put on your ship, has almost all of the workbenches you need in it, depending on manufacturer. So all of them will have an industrial workbench, a weapons workshop, and a armor workshop. If you have a Deimos or Stroud brand one, you will also have a research station in there. The only things missing then are a cooking station, and a um, a chemistry station or the medical one. So that is why I have the infirmary. The infirmary has both a research bench and a chemistry station. Uh, note the science lab also does. So for utility purposes, the infirmary and the science lab are essentially the same thing. It's just a flavor thing. Do you want to have medical beds or do you want to have a science lab? So I wanted to have all of these so I have access to all the workbenches, and this feels like a kind of logical ship design. You have places to sleep, you have places to work, you have an infirmary, you have weapon storage, you have your own personal room for sleeping in so that you can get that fabulous XP buff that is so important. And then you might be looking at these and wondering why they are here and what they are. So this connects to the awfulness of hab door placement where when you put habs next to each other you cannot predict where they are going to put their doors because it is random but there is some methods in order to counter this the first one is these monodirectional habs which are unique to nova galactic and hope tech nova galactic has the nova cross passage which is this note these only go left to right they can only be placed horizontally, so I can't put one between these two because they unfortunately don't let you flip them. I don't really know why, but they don't. If you did want to do one like that, Hope Tech offers two more. Um, they have a horizontal one, just like Nova does. There you are. The Hope Tech have cross brace, which I think looks fantastic as it looks to be very sturdy. It makes it look like your ship is not having wings sitting out on like spindly little arms. Like it looks strong. And then you have the Hab Spine, which is a you know front to back mono directional one, but also allows you to hook on objects on the sides. But note the door arrows are only on the front and back, so it won't spawn them there. The reason that these are such important things for shipbuilding is that they guarantee door spawns. So for instance here, if I put these halves next to the main one, it might put a door there, might put a door there. Maybe there, maybe there. Maybe it does one here and one here, and the lack of symmetry makes my brain melt. So I get sad about it. With this, you guarantee door spawns. I have never put one of these down and not have the door formed there. So you can use this. It does mean you have to spread your ship design out a little bit more because it has a wider footprint, but you can guarantee door spawns this way for creating whatever loops you want. For here, the only reason I have two is because I, I've, for some reason, I like having my ships look reasonable and I didn't like how it looked with just one because it's like these huge engine pods on the side are only held on by these hollow hallways with little struts on them. I could have used bracers, but I wanted to do this build entirely using Nova Galactic parts. So with a new ship build, I think that the best way to do it is you just lay out the habs you want, decide what pieces you want, and arrange them in a format that you think will be not awful to walk around. So setting it up so that when things are touching, they either have hallways between them or only one entrance. So another example of something you can do here is if I wanted to guarantee that this would fit right, 
if I put it here, it we don't know where it's going to put a door. If I put it there, there's only one way to get to this hab from everywhere else in the ship, and it's right there. So you can place things diagonally like that in order to guarantee it. A another trick that you can use is the attach method, uh, where when you are placing a hab, if you mouse over a door, we've noticed that they tend, this is not all the time, but they tend to like to put a door where you place the attach point at. So like if I did it like that, it would prefer to place a door there. Not always, and the issue being that certain hab layouts seem to have door preferences where they will not want to have a door in certain areas because it means removing something that I guess the hab does not want to remove. It will if it's forced to, but if given the option between that and something far more inconvenient, they like to take the inconvenient option. So those are your primary methods for dealing with horrible door placement. Monodirectional halves, using the attach method by mousing over where you want the door and clicking attach from there, or placing your halves in such a method that there is only one possible way to get between them, because given options, the game will pick the wrong one. Now, I think that is the main things to cover with hab layout. Again, a lot of people don't like ladders, I recommend one to two floor designs usually, three if you're really feeling it, but again, I hope you have good enough FPS to jetpack up the uh, tight corridor as well. The last thing to cover with this is to know what the habs actually get you. So the captain's quarter gets you a bed to sleep in and storage options. There will be multiple storage boxes in most captain's quarters that you can put things in if you don't want to use the ship's cargo hold. I only use the ship's cargo hold, but if you want to use different boxes for sorting or whatever, go for it. The armories will give you gun racks, and specifically the Nova one will give you mannequins. I don't know why, but none of the other armories have mannequins in them, but Nova Galactic Armory gives you two, so there's that. The control stations, and also the computer core, you'll notice on the left there that it says crew stations on it. This is part of a, the very poorly explained crew skills feature. Um, which is the culmination of three different values. So when you're assigning crew to work on your ship, it picks the lowest of the following values to decide what your max number is. So you've got your crew command, which is three. You can have three crew members and Sarah Morgan, because apparently her leadership buff um, cancels it out so she doesn't consume a slot. So you can have three plus Sarah. And then it will then check the crew stations on a ship. So you need one station per crew member, which is very easy to do. Most cockpits will come with two or three. Um, a crew station will give you four. A computer core will give you one. Um, different different uh, hab types will offer you different values for that but that's usually the easiest one to do because again like you can get four from that and that already pushes you past your threshold because the only way to raise your crew management skill is with the skill at the end of the social tree crew management which can push you up to i want to say like eight or something crew members but that is heavy investment for uh, not a ton of payout because you don't really need that many crew members the final value it checks is crew capacity this is offered through your different, uh, I would say, functional modules. So for instance, if you look at this engine, you'll notice crew capacity 0.25. So if I have four of these, then I have one crew capacity. I get 0.5 from a shield generator. I get 0.5 from each of those big turrets. I get 0.5 from those guns. So by combining modules on your ship, you will get increased crew capacity. I don't really know why, because it's not like it needs crew to man those guns. They work autonomously, but they require you to have a certain amount of modules to actually have crew on your ship for whatever reason. So if you under equip by a ton, then maybe crew capacity will come into play and prevent you from actually uh, assigning people to your ship. So I think that, yeah, that, so that wraps up everything I wanted to cover for the half.
hab section here. So when you're doing your initial ship build, after you decide what your hab layout is gonna be for actually walking around your ship, the next thing, of course, that you wanna check out is your cockpit. So here, of course, I'm using the Nova Bridge, but you have many options, which also, if you wanna know what they look like, check the gallery from my Reddit post. I have pictures not only of the interiors, but also the first person view while sitting in the seat, uh, because some of these have good stats and horrible views. Like as an example, the Stroud Eklund <clears throat> cockpit, it has four crew stations and it's a very open design and design. I think it looks great. But when you're sitting in that seat, your window is so narrow that you cannot see anything above or below you at all. Like you're looking through a slit. It is a horrible field of view. And then you have something like say Tayo, which I think Tayo's cockpits are actually what they wanted Tayo's aesthetic to be like because the inside is very nice, very clean, and the field of view is fantastic. There is no obstruction whatsoever. It is a great view from there. This is unfortunately hurt by the fact that Tayo is the only one that does not have a unique bridge. You'll see these are the cockpits. This is their bridge. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing inside and out. I've checked. It's sad what they've done for Tayo. But then you have other cool bridges. Like for instance, Stroud Eklund for some reason gets two bridges. Suck it, Tayo. We have a little bridge and a big wide one. Again, I don't know why they gave Stroud so much love in this. Uh, Nova has uniquely two separate normal cockpit designs. They have the C1 and the C2, as you'll see there. Um, C1 has more obstructions on the front window, more struts that get in your way, and worse stats. The only stats that really increase with each variant, by the way, of cockpit is the cargo. So you get free cargo from whatever uh, cockpit slash bridge you have. Getting a higher tier version, that extra money you're paying is literally just for extra cargo space. So go through find out whatever one you like the look of, the aesthetic of, and strap it on. Um, if you want to do a back of the ship cockpit, you have two options. You can either build a stack of habs to make like an elevator and then stick one of these out of the front of it, or the far easier way is just to use one of the bridges that have the door on the bottom. So like you'll notice here with the Stroud one, the arrow is on the bottom, thus you can place it on top of a hab in order to get in. Now that means you do have to have a ladder hole to get to your bridge, but you also get to do cool battleship designs where your bridge is perched on like the back and you can look down across the whole front of your ship. For cockpits, really it is an aesthetic choice. So at the end of the day, the only benefits you really get are some crew stations. And also there are some mount points that can give you extra space to put guns on, although that's not usually an issue because all the aesthetic pieces let you mount guns on them. So after cockpit and habs, you have two other things you want to consider before you get into the rest of the ship building, and that is your landing bay and your docker, which I have mounted both right here on the bottom. So I'm using the Nova Galactic landing bay, very simple. This landing bay variant has a arrow on top, so you have to place it underneath a hab, just like so. If you don't want to have a bottom loading lander, there are cargo bays for everything. The Deimos one is also a top loader. Hope Tech is a top loader. The Stroud Eklid one is a side loader. If you want to have your landing bay coming out the side of your ship, this one comes the door has to be out the back so it has to be next to a hab and on top of that uh that means that you have to have a very low ship design because your landing bay has to be on the bottom of your ship you'll see when you mouse over it here that there's that red cross hatch field underneath it and that's showing the landing gear of the ship so this is all good here because the landing gear and the landing bay are lined up they're on the same plane and they are lower than everything else on the ship, meaning it can land. So if we wanted this to work, it would have to be down here, which means I would also need a hab down on the bottom of the ship. So this lends itself towards a very low ship design. And then finally, if you wanna have the style where it comes out the front, 
but it also is low, so not a side loader, but a front loader here, you've got the Tayo one, which also you can flip backwards. Now, in my previous build, I said something stupid I didn't know about, which was I assumed that your ship would land backwards if you had your landing bay coming out the back. Uh, this is not true. And I've tested it with my stuff, and yeah, it really sucks. I really recommend you do not put your landing bay facing backwards. Um, it can look cool, but especially like, I left runway paths down here that I could fit through, but it, you cannot fit under most of this stuff. So if your landing is on the back and you don't have openings, enjoy walking out the back and having to run around your whole ship every time you want to get anywhere. It, it's awful. I recommend putting it just for ease and convenience, put it as far front as you can. So you have a variety of landing bays here you get to pick from. The final piece here is going to be your docker. Now the reason that you want to do all these things first, the habs and the dockers and the landing gear, is because they have specific placement requirements that you are going to build the rest of your ship around so you don't interfere with. So for instance the docker, which I have right here on the bottom, Dockers have to be connected to a hab, and that ring has to be farther away from everything else. So nothing can be lower than this ring because it's facing the bottom. If I placed one on top, like so, it would require nothing be higher than that ring. Or if you place one on the side, nothing can be farther to that side because it just has to have room for it to extend out and connect when you're docking with ships or stations. Now, fun tip. Landing gear don't count because they're not deployed when you're landing. So for instance, this, this is fine. This is lower than the cargo. And when those retract, it's lower than all that. So it fully allows this. And I recommend it because uh, I typically have HABs lower on my ships. And also I don't like how some of the dockers look. Now, this is one of the only dockers I'm using that is not a Nova piece. This is a Tayo piece. That's, again, personal preference entirely. Uh, there are other options. You can slap on, um, unfortunately, all, none of Nova stuff gets flipped upside down, which is one of those fun little quirks of the ship builder where certain objects just can't be flipped for some reason. So for this, I had to use a Tayo one, and it's the only one that matched the color scheme by default. The reason I'm going for that default Nova color scheme also is because you can repaint everything in this game except for the guns, which sucks. And a lot of the guns have a white or kind of silvery gray color scheme, so they stand out a lot on ships that they don't match. So I wanted to build one using the Nova color scheme so that I could use all the guns with it and it would look like a cohesive design. But yeah, so for dockers, you want to place them at the farther ex extremity of whatever side they are, and you have options of top dockers, bottom dockers, or side dockers. There are slim variants. So for instance, this is a slim docker here, and as is this one from Tayo that we're using on the bottom there, and this one from Stroud as well. And these all just strap right on top of a hab, but they kind of just, they don't extend it out. There are also block dockers, such as this one, or this one, uh, which these are not, they're shaped like halves, but they're not halves. Notice that there are no doors here. So for instance, if I place this here, it wouldn't technically work if I removed the hab underneath. The only reason this works is because its only door point is on the bottom. So it has to be placed on top of a hab, which is kind of annoying. I think they should have it where there is a hatch here, here, like on all the sides. And then if I walked to the end of this hallway, there would just be like the hatch door there for me to board with, but they don't. It's only for extending it up. So if you really need that extra space because there's stuff in the way, you can slap one of these bigger ones on top and it will extend it up and then the ring will extend from there. And then finally, if you are looking for some more unique ones, Hope Tech, I think, has some fantastic choices because you've got this side docker here from Stroud, but Hope Tech has just these tubes that you can strap onto the side like so. 
and they not only have ones for the side, but they are the only one that has a forward docking port. So with this one here, you strap it onto the front of the ship. It's got these neat little bumpers on it that I think look fantastic. And I really like that. I'm, I'm doing a pirate playthrough right now, and I think this works fantastic for that because I have it right under the cockpit like that. So when I board, I straight up like just ram into the enemy and, you know, it doesn't do anything, but for roleplay purposes, it feels cool. And for orientation, I can see exactly where I'm docked, which I love. So you've got some good options from Hope Tech. Keep it in mind when you're doing your build. So once you have your landing gear, or not your landing gear, sorry, that comes later. Once you have your landing bay, your habs, and your docker and cockpit set up. You've got the kind of core skeleton of your ship set up. So here, I'll show you what that would look like here. Ugh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not gonna do those ones, cause that's hard. Uh, but without aesthetic pieces on, my ship really is just a tube. This is a very simplistic design. Now, I did have these ones on the sides like this when I was building it originally, but with time, I decided it looked better if I had them off to the sides. That way, I could utilize this and show you guys how that works. Um, oh, an important building tip. Copying. Mouse over something. At least, again, I'm sorry, console players. You'll have to check whatever the contextual commands tell you at the bottom, but PC, mouse over it, hold control, hit G, and you copy it, and that way you can duplicate. And then I can just slap it in like that, and slap it in like that. Of course, this is the way. So, now that we have the core of our ship done, what we're gonna wanna do is we are going to want to get into the functional modules. This is your shields, your guns, your engines, your cargo, drav, your grav drive, and your reactor, you know, all that good stuff. And this is gonna be a long section because I have shit to say, notably about weapons. Weapons are, People, people on the internet don't understand how power works in this game, is, is how I'll start this off. They do not understand how the power system in Starfield works, because I see all these builds where people are like, this build will give you enough power to power these weapons. You don't need to power them. You don't need to power guns to get their full effect at all, but we will dig into that more later. We're gonna start with the most important part of shipbuilding. And the most important part of it is your reactor. Your reactor is the heart of your ship. It is where you get naturally the power that you locate to your other systems from. And it is where you get most of your ship's health from. Allow me to show you. This has a hull value of 1,350. This has five this has five 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 a lot of things give you five hull and then your reactor gives you a ton your reactor not only determines your power it determines your repair rate of damaged systems so when you take damage to a system and that little power bar up here turns red it's how fast those get repaired and then also the class. This is how you get those bigger modules on your ship. For instance, starting off, you will have access to the A-class reactors. Now, that doesn't mean, I, I want to dispel this as well. Reactors are not bad if they're A-class. You can get, especially as you level up, you can get fancier variants. This is an A-class reactor that makes 29 power. This is an A-class that makes 29 power. Like They can make plenty of power with an A-class. The way you get these is just by leveling up. The higher level you are, they will release nicer and nicer models of everything you see. But as you level up, you'll also notice they start requiring you to have starship design. If you want the fancy stuff, you need higher starship design rank. 
For these, unfortunately, I've not yet finished testing where all of these spawn, but again, from my experience, every module in the game, except for pirate stuff, will spawn at either New, New Atlantis or Aquila. So go to the New Atlantis ship guy, talk to him. If he doesn't have the reactor or shield or whatever you want, go to Aquila and they will. And if you don't see it either, it's probably because you're not high enough level. So if you have an A-class reactor, your ship is designated as A-class, meaning you can only equip A-class modules for shields, engines, and weapons. Once you go up to a B-class, which requires piloting rank three, and that is for the character. I know some people will be like, oh, Samco has piloting four. I'll assign him. Unfortunately, you cannot get any unlocks from character skills. I'm going to do a section later on in this video about character skills, but note anything that is a skill that for you would unlock something, whether it's weapon crafting, armor crafting, outpost crafting, um, or piloting more advanced ships, anything that is an unlock, your companions do not unlock it for you. There might be other effects. I've been, there are so many secret crew effects, but we will get into that later. But for now, just know if you want to pilot a B-class or C-class ship, you need to upgrade piloting. Once you hit B-class, now you are allowed to use B-class modules. You can still use A. This is a tiered system. So B can use A, and then C-classes can use everything. The thing you'll note is the jump from A-class reactors is like, 400 health, 650 for this really nice one, 820 for the fanciest A-class you can get, and then you start seeing stuff like 1100 or 1000. B-class are, you know, meant to represent tankier ships, so these reactors are very heavy, but they also have a lot more health for your ship. So you get to fly a tankier, slower ship, and then that will continue on into C-class. So for B, I think the actually the nicest power generation reactor I've seen is a B. Yeah, so this one here is 39 power generation. Very good. Requires rank 4 starship design and piloting rank 3, but 39 is a lot. And then you go down into C-class, and now suddenly, instead of being a one block high reactor, now you've got these giant cubes and you can get the nicest reactor in the game right here this is the pinch 8z which i'm using for this build no worries you can use smaller reactors or any any module i show in this entire build you can use a smaller version of it it doesn't matter the, you might not be able to power everything as much that's fine i'll tell you later when we're doing weapons like you don't need to power anything but shields Shields should always be fully powered. Everything else you can underpower, no problem. So for this, you'll see uh, this one has 1350 health. You are a tanky boy with this. You have 40 power generation, which is the highest I have seen. Crew capacity of three and 6.44 repair rate. So this reactor is going to be what is powering our build. Uh, but it doesn't fit right on the end here because there's another piece in between that holds it. I just wanted to talk about reactors first so you guys know. If you want to use the bigger stuff, you need a bigger reactor. But it also gets heavier, which means bigger engines. And bigger engines means less speed, conversely, but I'll explain that in a second in the engine section. But the other important thing you need to know about your reactors is that B-Class is a very, very nice jump in power. Very nice. B-Class is still relatively light compared to C-Class, and some of the highest DPS guns in the game are B-Class guns. And the second best shield generator in the game is a B-Class shield. And turrets appear in B-Class. You can get turrets that automatically shoot in B-Class. So B-Class is a very nice jump. And the final thing I will tell you is that if you are ranking up your piloting skill, this is a generic tip that's not for shipbuilding, but I want to toss in here. Uh, join the Vanguard. Your first mission for the UC Vanguard, they put you on a piloting sim. This sim has no consequences. It's virtual. It puts you in a ship. You get to shoot other ships. 
those kills count towards ranking up your piloting skill. Not only that, but you can cheat. You can get up out of the chair once it starts, and there is a control panel behind you where you can do hacking stuff to give you infinite shields and ammo and all that stuff. So you can just cheat and tear through ships and finish your rank up like immediately for piloting, if you want. So uh, that covers it for reactors. Now, the next step we are going to talk about is the grav drive, specifically because I need it in order to hold <laughs> uh, my reactor in place. So the grav drive here, grav drives are very simple, very simple. Your grav drive, all you really care about is thrust. You can see it here on the left side, grav jump thrust. When you are building your ship, you will see your jump range in the bottom here. This is entirely based on the ratio of jump thrust to weight. I don't know the equation, but it's very easy to work with. Just go, is my jump range less than like 18? Get a bigger grab drive. That's it. Like there are some stars on the outskirts that are very distant and you will not be able to access them unless you have like 20, 22, I think even 25 for a few jump range. But um, whatever, you really don't need to access those like 90% of the time. So for most casual use, I find like 15 is like you'll be running into issues a lot with not being able to reach things. But like 18 to 20, that's that's fine. Live right in there. So if your ship starts getting so heavy that your jump range drops out, just upgrade to a bigger grab drive. That's it. But don't go too big because there's a weight issue to come into effect here. Look at that. Its mass is 130. If this wasn't such a big ship, I would put on a lighter one because who cares? I'm getting extra mass from this. That means my mobility is going down, which means I need to get even more engines. So it is a it is just a balancing act of how much thrust do I need that my jump range isn't bad versus how much weight do I want on that my mobility doesn't get messed up. Which for this ship, it's uh, heavy as fuck. So we're going big on that. So that, for those following along at home, this is our ship build as it is right now. It is three two by ones in a row, two more two by ones on top, a Nova bridge on the front. The landing bay is directly underneath the first set of HABs here. And then we have those Nova cross braces attaching to the infirmary and all in one. Now for those that are doing this for themselves, feel free to swap these HABs out, do whatever you want. This layout is just what I liked. You can swap these around, you can use different manufacturers, it's whatever. And then we are putting the grav drive on the back here, dropping down below. And then this is in front of it, strapped on there. Unfortunately, this one is, the different reactors have different mounting points. This one doesn't have any on top. So I, you'll see, you'll see once it's done that I've worked it into the aesthetic of the ship to have this exposed reactor on top, which isn't typically something I do, but it's fine for this because it, uh, it looks good with all the brass. All right, so now that we are done with grab drives, we're going on to engines. Engines are a little bit more interesting. So for our ship here, we are doing four Dun 71s, which are gonna attach right there, and then one underneath it, like so. I've gotta move that up a little bit. Boop, and then same over here. One there, one there. Strapped right onto the back of these halves. Engines are much easier to understand which ones should be going on your ship. I'm sorry, I'm going to the station section. Don't look at that, that's stupid mod stuff that breaks the game. Okay, so going into engines. Bigger engines are not better, necessarily. There's actually a lot more nuance to this section. So, A-class ships, a, or I should say A-class engines, give you the best speed in the game. For instance, you'll see right now, my top speed is 140, and that is because I have B-class engines. Now watch this. If I wanted to add on a C-class engine, suddenly my top speed down there goes down to 130. That is because the speed of your ship is determined by your quote-unquote slowest engine. 
C-class ships, or C-class engines, have a speed of 130. B-class engines have a speed of 140. And A-class have a speed of 150. Except for there's one fancy engine that I'll talk about in a second. So you would ask, why would I use bigger engines then? And that is because of mobility and acceleration. As your ship gets bigger and the mass goes up and you start getting really heavy, especially in B and especially C-class, your mobility is going to tank, meaning your ship is going to turn like a boat and it is going to be really annoying to use in combat if you want to use fixed guns. You'll notice that the bigger an engine gets, the crazier its stats get. So down here in the A-class, you know, maneuvering thrust 3200 on the high end. This is a very fancy engine requiring Starship Design 4, like 3200. Uh, and then you start getting down here into B-class, like these ones we're using, the Dun 71s, these ones have 5200. And then C-class gets even huger. This one is, uh, what, 1100? Yeah, 11,000 maneuvering thrust. So if your ship is really heavy, you know, slap on some of these, and then suddenly your boat can actually turn, but your max speed will go down. And then the next point is engine thrust, which again is engine thrust is just to make your ship accelerate and also be able to move <laughs> as it gets heavier. So you will be able to get up to max speed faster the more engine thrust you have. So you might only have a top speed of 130, but you're going to get there pretty quick if you have four 25,000 thrust supernovas strapped onto the back. So, essentially, the advice for this is go for the smallest engine you can for your ship while still having good mobility. I wanted to go A-class with this ship, but I just couldn't get the mobility I needed. It was getting a little bit lower than I wanted, and this has some fixed guns on it. So, I, w I went for B also because I thought they looked cool. And that is a very important aspect of shipbuilding, is you just pick whatever you think is neat looking because a lot of these stats are minute, we'll say. Like, flying a ship with, like, 20 mobility is awful feeling, but the difference between, like, 85 to 80 is like, eh, if it looks cool, go for it. Now, I want to now mention the one special boy engine, and he lives down here. It's these. It's these boys right here. For some reason, the White Dwarf 3015 is unique. You'll note, too, the 3015 has worse stats than the 3030, but it has a higher starship design rank requirement at level 4, but it costs less, too. And the reason this one has a higher requirement is for some reason, this is the only engine in the game that has a higher max speed, which is 180. So, like, if I delete these here... So this is the only one. Boom, max speed 180. And you can equip a bunch of these. Now, this is uh, another point that I will bring up, is that uh, you can equip 12 power worth of any device. So for engines, you'll see max power 3. That means 3, 6, 9, 12. I can have 4 of these engines on. There are... I'm not actually sure if I've seen any that are less. Oh, there they are. Yep. This one is a max power of four, which means you can only have three of these engines on your ship if you wanted them. So that's a good check. It's not super important that you max out your engine power, only in cases like this where I need all four to even get to this level of mobility. Now, will we be fully powering them? Nope, because <laughs> I don't need to go that quick. But when I do want to go quick, it's nice to have the option. So that's engines. Bigger engines mean slower, but more mobility to move these giant floating bricks of a ship that you've built. And then the uh, Nova 315s, for some reason, are super fast. And if you combine that with piloting and thruster skills, and then assign Sam Coes, you get even more speed. Those that I've seen builds with that thing where it's a lightweight ship with a like a ton of those on it and they fly it is incredible feeling it's it's honestly really fun not as effective 
because you still get blown up by stuff, but it's pretty sweet to be able to just like boost and travel like miles in a matter of seconds. It's amazing. <clears throat> Alright, so next up, shields. Shields are super easy. Very, very simple to understand. Uh, big number, good. Shield max health is the only stat that you care about. Now, there are going to be people that will say things like, oh, but uh, what about the uh, max power per shield? And it's like, okay, sure. When you are low level and you are struggling to get by and you are looking at shields, you can run a very simple calculation, which is you take <clears throat> the shield max health and you divide it by the max power. So here, this one is 650, and we would divide that by seven. And what that tells us is how much shield per power pip we get. So for instance, for this one, it's 92.8 or 92.9 if we round up. Um, what that means is that every pip of power that we put into the shield will get us 92 HP. This is relevant when you are really scraping by for power. So like, even though a shield might not have as high max health as another when fully powered, maybe it gives you more shield for like four power pips than another does. You can do that. I will say though, uh, in every combat scenario, I've never not wanted my shield to be fully powered. Like enemies are pretty accurate in space and on very hard, which is what I play at, uh, space combat is just a stat check of seeing who can output DPS faster. So you want all the health you can get. So the answer is big shield, good. The more health you can get, the better. The difference in regenerate is so negligible. It, it's like, a, it is a matter of percents that again, like you get double the regenerate on an A class as a C class, but they regenerate like once you don't take damage for a little bit and they start regenerating, they're up in seconds anyway, so it barely makes a difference. <clears throat> so for this, there are two shields that you want to remember. Number one, if you join the Vanguard, you get access to the Vanguard Bulwark. This is the second best shield in the game, and it's B class. It has 1,450 health on a B class. So once you get a B class reactor unlocked, buy this thing. It's expensive, but it's amazing. The next best that you will find is all the way down here, and it is the Assurance SG-1800, which is what we are using today on this build. 1600 max health for the same amount of power. So, you know, just more health, a little bit less regenerate by like 1%. So, yeah, this, this is it. This is the peak of shields. It mounts on top too, which I like because that means I get to have it symmetrical instead of those uh, side mounted ones that there's no way to get these to look decent in my mind. Because they're always going to be hanging off the side of things and that means that your ship is asymmetrical, which is an aesthetic choice, but just not one I usually make. So that brings us to the end of shields and enters the most in-depth section, which is weapons. Now I'm linking it in the description of this video again, but I uh, went through the trouble of hand testing all of the guns for ships in this game and made a Excel spreadsheet of everything for damage, DPS, sustain DPS because there's reload speeds because some guns have magazines. So let me let me start to get into this. Okay, so the first thing that I want to cover that is so important for all these builds I see that make me upset is that um, power doesn't increase damage. There seems to be this weird idea that people have that like powering the guns makes them shoot harder, which it doesn't. In fact, there's even a loading screen tip that tells you putting power to weapons shortens their reload speed. And that's it. And that can be important for some guns or not important at all for others. And that is because guns come in a bunch of different variants. So the first obviously is that there are different types. There are lasers, there are ballistics, 
there are particle beams, there are missile launchers, and there are uh, EM weapons. So if we go over into the weapon section, which actually I actually think is over here. Yep. Okay. This will show you what I mean by this. So there's your different weapon types. Um, after testing all of them, like, yeah, they're pretty much all viable for, you know, their intended purpose. Although I'll say if you are going for efficiency, uh, particle beams are noticeably better than a lot of things. From both ease of use and efficiency and skill points, because like, if you run ballistics, you know, ballistics do crap damage to shields and a lot of damage to hull. So you can't really just run ballistics. You run ballistics with lasers, because lasers are the opposite. They do a lot of damage to shields and less damage to the hull. So that means if you want to max out your DPS for a shield ballistic build, that means you have to invest skill points into the laser weapons skill and then the ballistic weapon skill. Or you can just use particle beams particle beams do the same damage to both and they have like double the range of everything else like a lot of lasers and ballistics have a range of like 800 to 1250 and then disruptors are out here at like 3000 and their dps is oftentimes better than those and you get to shoot all of them at once because you don't have to worry about wasting your ammo on things that are um let like it's less efficient against like they always are the right choice so if you're going for efficiency just equip particle beams you only have to get four skill points then even then that's only if you want to max it out and get the crit chance thing you max out damage at level three and then also barrett who is a main companion also has level three crew uh in particle beam weapons so if you assign him to your ship you get even more damage and reload speed bonus from him so particle beams win out overall for ease of use and having to invest very little skill points. But let me now go into the more hidden aspect that I don't see a lot of people talking about. So we'll see, look here at the very first weapons, right? We've got a cannon and an auto cannon. The difference between these obviously is uh, if you look over at the stats on the left, the auto cannon does less damage, but its fire rate is double. And this is true across everything. So in A class, this is there's like some standardized stats I found in my testing, which is A class weapons are 3.49 fire rate for the slow firing ones and 6.65 for the rapid fire. And then when you get down into B class, way down here, then it's 2.5 and five. And then when you get to C class, it is 1.5 and four. So if you, you know, understand math enough to to notice that the fire rate here is much better than the damage decrease, like, yeah, the DPS on the rapid fire weapons are way better because even though they do a little bit less damage, like doubling your fire rate is significant for a DPS increase. The other factor is that they don't reload after every shot. So if you have slow firing weapons like this one, every time you shoot, the meter will go back up. Like the, the energy bar for that weapon will drop down to zero and then fill back up. This is why I think some people want to power their weapons because that affects the DPS significantly for these slow firing weapons. So like if you are fully powered, it will recharge um, at the same rate as the fire rate. So 3.49, it will have a reload speed fast enough that it can fire 3.49 times per second if fully powered. If you underpower it, then it's shooting much slower. So the DPS gets murdered if you underpower these. However, the rapid fire one not only has better DPS, but they also have a magazine, which is listed on the Excel sheet so you can see how much they have. Uh, but they drain a fixed amount from their energy bar every time they shoot. Note, this does not increase with more guns. So if I fire this RF autocannon 
I don't have the sheet in front of me right now, so I can't give you the exact number, but it's going to drain something like 3% out of the bar, and the bar goes up to 100, so it'll drain like 3 ammo. If I have two of these, it will still drain 3 ammo. If I have the max number of these, which is 4, they'll still drain 3 ammo. What that means is that not only is this much better DPS than the slow firing variant, but uh, I don't need to power it more than one. You need one power to have the gun turned on, but then beyond that, it's just to reload it. And these can shoot a fair amount of bullets before they need to reload. So say we are down here outfitting our ship and we put on a bunch of these auto proton beams. 20 damage per shot, 6.65 fire rate, and they drain, I believe, around three ammo per shot. So you can shoot them about 33 times before they need to be reloaded. Or actually, let's use, uh, yeah, the, these ones are fun. No, I actually don't know the ammo consumption on those. Yeah, we'll use this one. So for these proton beams, right, they have a max power of four, which means I can have three of these. And each of them is shooting. So if I were to fire all of these, that is uh, 99 shots coming out before they need to reload. Now, no, they're shooting at the same time, so it's not like you get to shoot 99 times. I'm saying there's 99 projectiles being made. You can only shoot 33 times because they all fire in sync. But uh, that is insane DPS output, and you, do you only need one power for that. Now, if you're in a huge fight where you need to kill enemy after enemy after enemy, yes, you will need to put power into them to reload. But the thing is, uh, it takes six seconds to reload these when they are fully drained, if you fully power them. So what will happen usually is I'll be shooting enemies and in like 99% of fights, everything will be dead before I need to reload because the DPS on particle beams is so good. If I do need to reload, uh, I just drain power from like engines or something. I go over, I hold the up arrow on the particle beams so it puts all the, it dumps all the power in which that's a shortcut if you don't know you can hold down to fully drain something or hold up to fully power something so fully power it six seconds fully charged take it back out put it back where i need it uh and that, again that's even if you want to do that like because again most things will die well before you run out of ammo because i can have three of these and that's only one weapon slot I've got two more weapon slots. I can have a ton of particle beams that just shred things, and I don't need to power any of them because they have a magazine, and that magazine size is unaffected. It's just reload speed. So that's why I pretty much always recommend that you max out your weapons and equip as many as you can of the rapid fire variants. So if you want to know if something is a rapid fire variant, number one, most of them have the word auto in the name that helps, but also you can just check the fire rate. Is it faster than the other one? Yeah, okay, this is the auto fire variant. And you can check the Excel sheet I made if you wanna see comparisons to find out what the best stuff is. Uh, for this build, I am not using an optimal DPS loadout. I'm using a, this looks cool loadout because the color scheme matches. Still good though, still very good. So for this, I am using these Disruptor 3340A auto alpha turrets. I'm using the lovely Obliterator 250 MEV Auto Alpha Beams, and then also I'm using the CE-59 Missile Launchers. And now I will explain turrets a little bit for you guys. So turrets unlock at Class B, so they're Class B and Class C turrets. They're always identifiable because one, when you spawn turrets in, they will be sideways. So you can see there, even in their preview, it's sideways. Forward, sideways, stars. Turrets will fire automatically at anything in range. They only have a limited turning arc. They cannot turn all the way around. From my testing, it appears their turning rate is approximately 80 degrees or so. So they can't turn fully 90, but like nearly fully 90. So for instance, if this turret is facing sideways like this, it couldn't shoot something directly ahead. But if I kind of turn the ship diagonal to the enemy, then it could start firing at them. They can also fire like nearly straight up too from their starting position. So that means you can place turrets to 
cover the back of your ship if you want to try like doing a speed build where you run away from enemies and they can pelt them or you can do sideways for broadsiding or you can just have them all facing forwards which is what i'm doing for this build because again it's just a dps increase because uh turrets are uh brokenly strong not only do turrets often have better stats than their standard counterparts but they uh also benefit from a second skill so like a particle beam will get increased by the particle beam skill these turrets will benefit from the particle beam skill and also the automated weapon skill so they get double the bonus so the dps is just insane now the only downside of course is that they fire indiscriminately so if you want to do boarding i recommend draining the power from the turret so they stop firing and then you can do you know manual targeting stuff but for raw killing potential turrets are incredible with particle beams undoubtedly being the best because the other turrets don't they're not smart right so like if you have a railgun turret like this right it's a ballistic turret so it's going to shoot any enemy it sees even when their shields are up and then it's going to do crap damage and then it's going to run out of ammo if you get a rapid fire variant there are slow like this one actually is a slow firing variant so if it's underpowered it's going to be firing slowly but if you get a rapid railgun like this one this is a high fire rate one it's got a magazine so it will drain its magazine firing at a ship with its shields up barely do any damage and then when the shields are finally down it's reloading so it doesn't do anything so ballistic turrets are probably the worst laser turrets are at least a bit better because there's more times that you're engaging enemies with shields that are up still so it's not wasting as much ammo and then particle beam turrets are just the best because they're always working they're long range they're accurate they never waste damage because it's always the max damage they can be doing fantastic so now i'm gonna go in a little bit about the variants too so you'll notice here that there are a lot of things that look very similar so like you've got the neutron beam you got the neutron turret you got the auto neutron beam so it's the rapid fire one and then you have the helion beam and then the auto helion beam so for a lot of manufacturers they will as you level up unlock an upgraded variant so like the neutron beam is just the lesser version of the helion beam which is why it requires Star starship design 2 and then this one starship design 3. if you have access to them yes these are flat upgrades this is just the same gun but it does 50 percent more damage <laughs> however this is not always the right choice because is you're like wow look at that damage increase look at the max power though it's max power four which means you can have three of these because you can only go up to 12 per weapon weapon groups are decided by the model so i could have three of these max on the ship i could equip both of these i could have three of these and then four of these but if you're just picking one an extra gun is kind of a big difference now i don't know the numbers on this one specifically again check the excel sheet because i have columns in there that will show the dps when you have the max number equipped so a full loadout of auto neutron beams or a full loadout of auto helion beams so you can see how those stack up once it takes into account all the you know different factors of magazine size reload speed all that stuff but uh equipping more guns is usually a good call so just because it's more expensive does not necessarily mean it's better because less guns is a big factor which comes into a few recommendations i have on some guns that are so good they just shine past everything else so number one and one a lot of people talk about but i i it's a special place in my heart are the uh vanguard hellfires you have to join vanguard to have access to these but uh notice two things one 7.5 fire rate which is higher than like any other gun in the game still very good hull damage good shield damage max power of two two which means you can have six of these things you can have six 7.5 fire rate high hull damage so if you equip six of these again it's magazine based so you don't have to put power to them you just have one power 
the second a ship shields comes down, you can just destroy it instantly with a hail of hellfire. And that's great. I love these things. They're B class too. They say 800 range, but you can usually shoot a little bit past that, no problem. Uh, these are incredible, incredible value. And you'll, if you look at the DPS chart, you'll see like the hellfires shine above so many other things. Um, if you are deciding what weapons to use and you don't want to just go for particle beams because they're the easiest, um, the thing to note about ballistics is that ballistics also get a bonus at rank 4 for increased module damage. Uh, so you can use these as kind of a module sniper if you have the targeting skill, uh, where high damage uh, ballistics, like cannons and stuff especially, you can just like pick pieces off of enemy ships. Um, mostly useful for boarding, not much else because honestly you can kill stuff much faster than you can disable it like sure you can aim and try to target the engines but in that same time you can just hold down the shoot button for like two and a half seconds with hellfires and most enemy ships will be gone if their shields are down uh the only other thing worth noting in ballistics is uh this it's the mauler 106 s it's a shotgun it's the only shotgun in space i don't it's unique so you know fun fact there is a shotgun weapon and it's this one it's just hidden amongst the other ballers all right and then uh following up ballistics obviously if you run ballistics you pretty much have to run lasers as a companion lasers are weird i was very happy that the ballistic reload speeds were extremely consistent lasers are not different brands of laser like the dragons yeah the horizon defense ones the light scythe ones and the shinigami ones all have different reload speeds i'm used to them having different magazine sizes because that was true of ballistics as well if you check the chart the different manufacturers like one is a low capacity higher damage one one's like a medium capacity one's a high capacity or it's the damage is actually usually better for the high capacity ones for some reason it's usually like a, a scaling factor of there's one manufacturer that makes a fancier model that costs more, has a bigger magazine size, better TPS output. Only downside is usually the reload is worse. The lasers are, there's so, there were so many stats here for doing reload speed. It was so annoying. I'll break it down like this though. You can use whatever you want. The Rezas are probably the best ones for DPS and sustained DPS, but you also have to use Shinigami weapons, which means that you have to stick with their weird turquoise. Every other gun in the game is like either dark gray and gold or black and gold or white and red, right? So it's like you, the Deimos aesthetic or the Nova aesthetic, you get to match. Everything in space is either dark gray or white. But Shinigami stuff is turquoise. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't match like any other module in the game and you can't repaint weapons. So like, if you want turquoise, here you go. They're the best lasers in the game, but they look super weird for everything else. Sorry. <laughs> uh, besides that, they, I will say uh, laser weapons reload significantly faster than ballistic weapons do. Uh, they've got much better like sustained DPS output for that but of course you know they suffer from a very low hull damage so good for shredding shields that that's kind of it um, and then their benefit is that when you rank them up to rank 4 it just keeps decreasing the power draw when you're in targeting mode so if you like using targeting mode you can fire lasers for very long and it before it drains the targeting bar fully. Moving on, we've got missiles. Missiles are hard to run, I will say. They are great burst damage, very high burst damage, but very, very slow reload speeds. Every single missile has the same reload speed, which is if you fully power it, it is 20 seconds across the board. But different missiles have different magazine sizes, which are, again, all on the Excel sheet. So there are some that are very notably good. Like, for instance, uh, the, where is it? the Infiltrator SCO2. Yeah, this guy. 
This thing's got like 14 missiles in it before it has to reload. So even though its damage isn't as good as others, this has one of the best sustained DPS values for all the missiles. Because you get to shoot so many missiles and then, you know, reloads in the same amount of time and you get to shoot a fuck ton more missiles. So those are amazing. And the other, the I think overall the best one actually is a B class one. The yeah, the Hunter Mag 450s, same from Horizon Defense. These are like the best sustained DPS for missiles that you can get, because they hold it's either 10 or 12, but good damage, good capacity. And then if you want raw whacking power, uh, it's the Atlatl 280Cs, 277 damage, but they only hold two and then they take 20 seconds to reload. And you can only equip three of them because it's max power four. So if you have three of these equipped, you get to shoot a total of six 277 damage missiles, but then you're 20 seconds of reloading. So you can absolutely pop one guy, but usually it seems like it's better to run the uh, hunters because they're still decent damage but it's better sustained damage and all that but overall i i feel missiles are in a rough spot because they're they're good but you still have to like lock on to the enemy which takes time and my experience is that even against very high level enemy ships like in new game plus at a high level when they're spawning in like the three and four variants of ships so that they're the same ships that you've been fighting before but with upgraded modules um with all particle beams i can still kill stuff in like a matter of seconds so the literally in the time it takes to lock on you can kill an enemy with particle beams so the raw efficiency of particle beams and even just laser ballistic too it's like the lock on time is just it's annoying and there's not really good ways to reduce it which i really think they should have a bonus in the missile skill for lock on time reduction that would make them so much nicer to use but that is an annoyance for me personally so i don't typically use a lot of missile builds though i did in this one because it uh it matched the color scheme and then finally we have EM weapons, and EM weapons are another one that is, eh, like, if you want to do boarding against weak enemies, EM weapons are great, because you can disable equipment on enemy ships very quickly with these, and without hurting them. So you can take out engines without any risk of, of destroying the enemy ship. However, one, I don't usually board ships that are that low level and weak. It's usually a bigger ship that I see where I'm like, oh, that's like a three variant of like a big ship. I'm going to shoot out the engines and take it. And it's tanky enough that I can shoot out the engines without destroying it. No problem. The other annoying thing is that these disable modules for so long and you can't speed up the repair rate with your shield or with your reactor because... If you don't know, the way it works is that when a module gets damaged, it turns red. Like, the bars up in the power meter will turn red. One, The one at the bottom will start, like, glowing gray, and then after a bit, it will be repaired, and then it will go up to the next one and continue. But you can speed this up. If you power it, it will start recharging whatever you power. So if this is empty, right, say the grab drive is completely destroyed and it's no power in it, one bar. If I put two power bars in, both of these will repair at the same rate. If I fully power it, all of them will repair at the same time. Can't do that with EMPs. So in my pirate playthrough, I was messing around with them, and I noticed, wow, it is so annoying that I capture this ship, and it wasn't fixing the EMP when I was boarding. No, it saved it for me, because then once I am done killing everyone, I get in the ship, the engines are disabled, EMP'd can't repair them at the same time gotta wait for the emp to wear off and it takes so long it's awful feeling no you can still grab drive with the engines out assuming you didn't emp the grab drive too uh but i was operating as pirate out of the key starbase so i had to fly to that starbase to dock so i'm just, i fast travel there 
and then I'm just sitting at 540 meters staring at it, waiting for my engines to come back on, and it takes so long. And between that and the lack of DPS, because you can no longer kill things, like, I've seen people say, like, oh, like, they're so good because you can disable enemy modules. But again, like, I just, I don't run into fights that I can't end much faster. Like, it's like the saying they used to have in Warframe. It's like, the best crowd control is dead. Like, yeah, you can disable an enemy ship by shooting it with EMP stuff, but you can also just, you know, blow it up. So, for even for boarding stuff, I still think it's better to just, I just run with particle beams and... Then I go into targeting mode when the shields are down, and I shoot the engines a few times till they turn off, and then I board it. So uh, suppressors are good for making sure the ship doesn't die, but I at, at least personally feel that most times it's better just to run with um, ballistics or particle beams and just target the engines. Now, if you don't have the targeting skill, sure, these will work for that, but we're talking about one skill point versus 30% of your DPS output potential. So that covers all of the weapons. Uh, again, the most efficient loadout that you can do for this is going to just be particle beams. You only have to put in a few skill points. Barret will buff them up even more. They're long range, accurate, high damage, hits the same for shield or hull. Like, they're just great. They're just great. And they make the best turrets. If you're picking one, there's a couple that are really good. One of the ones that we are using for this build, the Obliterator. These things uh, hit really hard, have a good magazine size require Starship Design Rank 3 and are pretty expensive, but these things are, they hit like trucks. The other ones that are worth noting are the PB-175 Autos, which I believe are right here. Yep, PB-175 Autos. These things have insane DPS. You can see there, they do nearly the same damage, but at a higher fire rate. So these things will tear through enemy ships and max power of three. So you get to have four of these. And that's why they're 25 grand a piece. But they will shred anything. And I, I they're a staple of my builds when I'm going for a harder ship fights. Uh, the other one worth noting is the Vanguard Auto Projector, which I think is out of C-Class. Yep, there it is. No, that's the Ares Particle Cannon. I'm looking for the Obliterator. Where are you? Vanguard, you'll notice uh, a lot of their equipment just straight outperforms everything else, uh, which is, you know, kind of a, a funny thing. But yeah, if you want good parts, just join... There you are, Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projector. High fire rate, good damage, max power of two. Just like the Hellfire, so you get to have six of these things. So again, hail of gunfire, crazy DPS output. All right. So that covers all of that. Oh yeah, and for EM, I'll also note the, the best EM device in the game is the uh, it's actually an A class one the uh, one nullifier 175 I believe it's called yep nullifier 1750 33k best EM damage output you can get if you do want to run EMs getting a full load out of these is the best you can do all right so yeah technically if you wanted to build a ship for the max possible DPS output the answer would be to get all of the um, particle beam turrets you possibly can, maybe the uh, Vanguard Obliterators or the PB-175 Autos as well, but like two sets of the particle beam turrets and uh, one set of fixed ones and you'll kill everything that gets near you. Um, for this though, uh, we are running with these turrets, these Obliterators, 
and these missile pods here. Uh, and I'm just not showing you placement yet because the final section here that we are getting into is going to be the structural section and I need those to place these. So we'll get to that momentarily. But the final piece of the functional modules that we are gonna talk about are fuel and cargo. Fuel is easy. That is your jump distance, which is weird because that is pretty much the same thing as range, but it's different. So your jump range is when you are at a star and you are picking a nearby star to jump to, the longest jump you can make is your jump range. So you can jump from this one to another one 30 light years away. However, if you are traveling across the galaxy, you are going to be making multiple jumps in a row. You'll it will go from star to star to star. The number of those connections you can do is decided by your fuel tanks. So the more grab jump fuel you have, the more consecutive jumps you can do. So literally the only thing this does is prevent extra loading screens. If you have low jump fuel, you're going to have to jump halfway and then you can just immediately jump again. But if you don't want to do that, you know, this is just a convenience feature. Luckily, they're pretty cheap and pretty light, so it's not not a huge deal. <clears throat> so for these, um, I've got a set of these Ballistic Solutions uh, balls here, which I always love putting on the back of my ships. Those are going to strap right onto the back of the grab drive right there. And then the other ones I'm using are actually right here these M30 Ulysses tanks. And that's because these tanks fit really well with the Nova cowling here. You'll see, it's like they were made for each other. Um, unfortunately, the higher, like the higher up versions of these tanks don't fit because they add on a second tank underneath and it wraps all the way around. And Nova does not have a cowling like that. Because uh, unfortunately with these, you can't flip them upside down. You can only go left and right with them. I wish I could turn them upside down to make a full U, but uh, I can't, so we're stuck with these smaller ones here. But again, it this still can jump most places without an issue. Uh, and that's the thing you'll notice with a lot of the cargo and fuel pods, is that they seem to be built to match up with certain manufacturers. So, for instance, Deimos builds will often have these sextant uh, cargo holds on them because the brass matches the brass that is covering all of their structural pieces. In this case, though, uh, we are strapping these right here. These are shielded cargo holds, which these are one of the few pirate items in the game. So if you want pirate items, it is two things. One is cargo holds, which is there are normal cargo holds that you can get very large ones of, and that just determines how much stuff you can store in your ship. I recommend having a lot because your ship storage is amazing. Not only can you sell things directly from your ship storage at any vendor, just there's a button to flip between inventories, so hit sell from your ship, but you can deposit things into your ship inventory, even when you're out of the ship. If you're within like a couple hundred meters, you can deposit things into it and take things from it um, just by going and opening the menu and clicking the ship tab and then hitting the cargo hold button from there. And not only that, but every crafting bench in the game pulls from your starship, even ones that aren't on your starship. Like if you go to a random shop and it's got a weapon bench in it and you access it, you'll have all the resources on your ship to work with. And there is a button if you are in your inventory, you can swap over to your ship's cargo and then swap back. And there will be a new button that says transfer to cargo. And if you go into resources, there's a deposit all resources button. So you can dump all of your resources from crafting directly into your ship. So it's, it's so easy to manage. So I recommend having a big cargo hold. The pirate items though, are these shielded versions, which are always smaller, like on the smaller end of the cargo holds, but they're shielded, meaning that if you have illegal items in your cargo hold, you have a chance to avoid detection from authority. So if you have smuggling things, if you have harvested organs, stolen artwork, whatever it is, and you get scanned, as long as it is not in your inventory, it is in the ship cargo, not on the ground of the ship, it has to be in the cargo hold, you have a chance to not be detected. And the more headway you have, the better that chance gets. So for instance, if you are like, 
if you have, for instance, this is cargo shielded 190. So if you have 190 pounds worth of illegal goods, it's not going to be as good as, say, you had like 50. So you want to go under your shielded cargo capacity in terms of how much illegal stuff you can store at once. I just have these ones here because I figured I'd throw on a little bit and I like that the aesthetic of it matches the brass of these engines and the brass of the reactor. The other cargo holds that we are going to be using are under the ship here, in which we are using this 10T hauler cargo hold giving us 585 right there. And then there is a another cargo hold I ripped out earlier. There you are. And that one's going right there. That's a 20T hauler, 760. So between those two, we have a, a ton of cargo space right underneath the ship and makes a nice smooth line into our grab drive. And then we have these two extra shielded ones back here by the reactor. All right. So that covers all of the functional modules. Now we're going to transition into some minor ones before we go fully into structural. So there is a extra tab called equipment. Equipment is much like uh, weapons. It's in the same thing. It can only slot into the square attachment points. And there are three different things, essentially. Not these three. These are all just upgraded versions of the same thing. These are signal frequency jammers. Basically, when you're doing a ship scan for shielded cargo and you have this on, it just increases your chance of evasion. So you put on this nice one, the multi-frequency, you basically have no chance of being detected, assuming you're not going over capacity in illegal goods. You can get these from pirates, aka if you go to the key or the red mile uh, casino area. There's a ship tech there that sells scan jammers and the shielded cargo holds as well. There are also two unique equipment items that I do not have available to purchase here, but if you complete the Crimson Fleet questline, they unlock two special modules that increase your targeting lock-on speed and your shield regen speed. So, if you really want that, I think it's like 20% shield regen increase. Go for it. But again, once the shield starts recharging, it recharges pretty quick. So I've never really ran into an issue for it. But if you're going for like a lighter build, say a class A speed build, maybe having that shield regen would be nice so that when you disengage, you can get your shields back even quicker. But yeah, so that's equipment. Now, before we get fully into structural, there is a kind of hybrid of structural and weapon equipment that you should know about. And that is the mounting plate. So if we go over here into the structural tab, you'll see this equipment plate right on top. It's made by Tayo Engineering. They're not available everywhere, but when they are, it's very nice. What this does is this will convert a circle attach point into a square attach point. So right now I can only attach ship parts to this, but if I click that, now I can put a gun there or an equipment slot. So you've got those for vertical. And then you also have the horizon weapon mount for side ones, which is the same thing, except it adds on two. So you can have this kind of like canted design like that. Uh, it doesn't look as good when you have asymmetric guns like this, but you know, you can uh, create weapon points very easily that way. Although structural pieces also add on a ton, and I mean a ton of mounting points. All right, so we've covered every functional module. We know, okay, we got the hab set up, we got our reactor, we got our grav drive, engines, storage for cargo and fuel. We are, we're good. The skeleton is here, if you will. So now we have to start figuring out the aesthetic pieces so that we can attach the guns and everything where we want them to be and figure out the overall shape of the ship. So the structural tab is where it, it's where everything is. It is where everything is. It is where the different manufacturers aesthetics really come out. So for instance here at the top, we've got Deimos, right? And Deimos 
has you, these big slopes. They've got braces, braking engines. You've got make sure to check if there are variants that you can pick between because a lot of these have things that fit together. Like this is a bumper that is for the front, the mid, and then the back. So you put all three of those in a line and they make one big smooth shape. You've got these hull bracers here, which just allow you to fill out your ship and add new attach points to give it mass. And then you've got these decorative pieces for on top, like the radiator, the skegs that go underneath the ship, the spines that go on top, which, you know, the radiator and the spines fit together. So Deimos kind of encourages you to, you know, start a slope, continue it into a spine, maybe have a radiator thrown in there, maybe have this come in. This one's got some weapon attach points on top, too. So the different manufacturers have a bunch of aesthetic pieces that serve no purpose other than to one, add on weapon mount points, and two, allow you to edit the, um, the silhouette of your ship to create a more pleasing design. So, you know, Hope Tech, we got pipes, pipes for days, radiators, big old blocks and risers and thrusters. And then Nova, we have the Nova Bracer, which is all scaffolding, braking engines, little bits to put on top like these engine struts which uh there's kind of a a universal attachment system which you can see really well from this notice that it's like a point there a point there a point there a point there and then you look at the nova habs and they have a little spot there a little spot there and you'll notice that this shape goes across everything like for instance for these engines point there, point there, point there. So there's this kind of universal section of, of attach points on everything so that a lot of different manufacturers can fit together well because they know we have to have the lines line up with the three points on top. So because of that, you absolutely can combine things linearly. For these more outside pieces, sometimes different manufacturers don't line up very well, but that is up to your discretion to figure out if you want them to go together. So for this build, I wanted that Nova ship, so I was looking specifically at Nova pieces. And we're going to start strapping those on now so you can see what I went for here. So for this, this is the Nova Cowling. Nova Cowling comes in three different variants which is the front, mid, back, to make these nice big wing shapes. So for here, I've got a mid right on the bottom and a back one there. And then I have just a back one on top because I kind of like this sloped design here. Then I have radiators like that. I love these radiators. I love the brass color scheme. I'm mad at Bethesda because they forgot to make a variant for the big one. Notice the big radiator has this cut out here, just like these ones do. Except the difference is that these radiators can be flipped so that it's on the other side. The big one cannot, so it is always missing the top right corner and that asymmetry uh, it just drives me crazy, so I don't use it. We've got this porthole that we're going to be putting right there onto the side of the control station hab. And then we're doing the same thing on the other side. So radiator, radiator, back facing cowling, mid cowling, back cowling, and porthole. On top of these two cowlings is where we're putting these two disruptors. And then on the bottom of these ones is where we're putting two obliterators. Next up, we have the top here, which is composed of the top cowling, the front and backwards variants that are just going to go right there. And we are putting a obliterator on top of that, lines up that red stripe nicely. Now we're going to the back here. And again, we are with any of this design. I went a lot more to my design philosophy on how I make ships in my Deimos video. But the whole idea is that you're just looking to set up unique lines using the parts given to you by a manufacturer. So I really liked that these caps fit really well over the holes there and that the struts would come out. And I originally had these farther in, but I'm like, no, I want them out to the side so they actually have firing lines. Even though that doesn't matter, your guns can shoot through your ship. 
uh, I wanted it just for the aesthetic value. Now for here, um, these have mounting points on the side, so very easily we can clip on you. Clip on you. I'm not gonna put the braking one on yet. So same thing, back cowling, mid cowling, front cowling. I like having cowlings coming back over engines because it makes it feel like they're secured in, like they're being held into place. And same thing for this, I like protecting the weapons, um, the weapon mounts that are coming out the front here. And then we are going to be covering up the front of that as well with top cowlings. And so it makes this nice big engine pod. So you can see through, you can see the piping showing through, but we don't have everything just exposed out. Now I'm gonna flip underneath her and I'm gonna throw on some landing gear. Landing gear are something I usually leave for the end because you can fit landing gear kind of all over the place. The only rule is they have to be on the same line as the landing bay. And landing gear come in two variants, which I usually refer to for myself as short and tall, or legs and bottoms. Legs are like this. They are two blocks tall, so they have to clamp onto the side of something. So for instance, if I wanted to use this and have it line up with the landing gear, I would have to clamp it onto this level right here. So I don't have any exposed mount points on the sides of this ship, so I can't attach legs to it. This is the same as the uh, Nova Galactic ones that you have on the frontier as well. They have to mount to the outside. But then you have under ones. Now under ones, like this, the Stroud Eklund one, by the way, some Stroud Eklund pieces are sneaky. They have variants and they don't tell you. Like, look here, this one is meant to line up with the Stroud right piece. This one is the middle piece. And then this one is the left piece. So they have this middle piece just hidden in there and just don't mention it. But yeah, if you want just like a straight up block lander, you got the Aki lander from them. You've got the pinpoint landing from Tayo. Even bigger pinpoint landing from Tayo, even bigger. <laughs> so. These ones are nice because you can just clip them onto the bottom of a ship, which typically I don't decorate as much. So, you know, when I'm looking at the bottom here, I was thinking like, oh, what can I fit under here? Well, luckily Nova Galactic has these different variants of bottom landing gear. They have a four one, a middle one. So like you can, you know, clip these together in a line and then a wide one. So they're kind of all meant, you know, to like fit together in like a tube shape. So it'd be like that and then another one like that. But I just like the wide ones because they also have side mounting points, which is very good to me. So I can clamp this to the bottom. I can clamp this to the bottom. And then I can strap this on because these braking thrusters only have one mount point on the side. And I can strap that to the landing gear. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here, except this time I'm gonna go faster. So I'm just gonna double click that, clamp you in, double click that, clamp you in. Landing gear there, landing gear there, clamp the reverse thruster on, and then strap a cap on it. Perfect. So the other thing I did is that for these, these big Nova weapon struts that come out the front here have all sorts of mount points. You can have them on the outside, the inside, like that, like that. So these give you a ton of mounting options. Personally, I just liked having them in there because I liked how it looked, having these like big missile racks coming out. So I've got the two sets of CE-59s tucked into there. Again, dealer's choice. If you don't like missiles, if you want to use lasers, particle beams. You might not be able to fit them both in here, but you can definitely fit them on the outside there. Like if I remove, I don't think you can have them at the same time, but if I took you off, aim there, do the attach feature, you know, we can strap all sorts of stuff out here. So dealer's choice, whatever uh, weapon system makes you feel best. Um, get back on there. But for this, for the aesthetic value, we're doing CE-59s. And then uh, I didn't point out, but the second set of the disruptor turrets are back here because max power three, so we get to have four total. Uh, note, unfortunately, you cannot get duplicates of the same weapon across two weapon groups. So I couldn't do like 
four of these in group one and then four of these in weapon group two um, they don't let you do that so you have to have three unique weapon models now those can be different variants of the same thing i could have this and then the slow firing one and then the non-turret one and but you can't do the exact same one and last little piece here we're going to take this shorter landing gear here and we're just going to plop it right in the middle there just because I wanted it to have a more sensible landing gear pattern. Uh, and then back here, so this, you know, I had this big space back here and I wanted to think about what to do with it. So I went with bracing, the bracing pieces, which are every manufacturer has one where it's basically just this is a fake hab. You know, it's a cube, but it's got a mounting point on the sides, bottom and top. So I put a line of these like so. And then I put on a set of these radiators and then also the shield generator because I needed a place for the shield. And I liked the look of the brass going from like, you've got the brass line there, brass on there. You've got these radiators on the sides here. And then you have this like strip of radiators leading straight to the reactor, which, you know, design wise is sensible. The radiator, the reactor is what's making a lot of the heat on the ship. Having the radiators nearby for heat dispersion is a sensible choice. And then I put these cowlings on. So that way I could have extra fuel capacity for tons of jump range. And it fit so nicely. And I just wanted to show that, yeah, different ship manufacturers have certain pieces that fit with certain like fuel and reactor parts. So now the struts on the reactor blend in with the struts of the Nova bracers here for this kind of industrial grid pattern back here. And that leaves us with a finished ship. Now, last pieces, don't forget, there are extra things that you need to do. Number one, hit the flight check button go to weapons and make sure that they're all assigned to a group. So if you have turrets, assign those to the last one because you don't need to actually do anything. They, clicking the button doesn't do anything for the turrets. They just work, so you don't need them. So left click for this one is the alpha beams and right click for the missile launchers. We have a top speed of 140 because we have B-class missiles. We have 85 mobility from these big old boys having a lot of maneuvering thrust, even though we are quite heavy at 1,884 mass. Note, I love the structural pieces, and you should too. They make your ship look great, but these do technically just make your ship worse because they don't give you any health. They don't give you any hull pieces. They only add mass. So like each of these is eight mass, each of those is eight mass. Like, so all I'm really doing is spending money to make my ship heavier with no actual advantage because these don't do much, <laughs> but they look cool. And that's much more important. So note that when you're building, there is a build limit. You can only do 130 pieces and you can only extend 40 meters in any direction note any direction so the total length is technically 80 meters but they measure these measurements from the center point so you can only go 40 meters in any direction and it's always centered so if that says 41 or if that says 41 you've gone too far and you have to cut it back this one is exactly at max length and Overall stats are good. 85 mobility is good. 30 jump range is fantastic. Six max crew is perfectly fine. Cargo is 2000, which is great. Shield 1600, which is the best you can get. Hull is 1560, which is very high. And we have a ton of damage for our missiles, particle beams, and particle turrets. The last thing you're gonna wanna do with this is some painting. So for instance, for these, I selected all of these cowlings right here repainted them and i believe yep over here this is the color value i used all red all red right there in that kind of dark zone just because i wanted to match it up to the dark red that you will see on nova pieces like these and also on the uh, obliterator turrets as well other thing I changed is this has the same red tone for those corner pieces. And then over here, I made this a dark gray um, to give it that 
outlined look because currently it's just like white you know it's kind of hidden i think it looks nice so i try to draw that out a bit more although honestly i could probably do it a little lighter that's good and then down here these and also i believe i grabbed the engines as well because they're a bit brighter than normal and i took all those ah yes and then also these braces here <clears throat> and i changed their primary color to be this kind of bright white color uh, i did not mean to grab that one but for everything else you know you can get it to match it because these will be a darker gray these will be a brighter white so you can kind of bring the color schemes in to be as close as you can get to everything else but uh didn't want to actually edit that one because the default nova stuff is good for the cowlings and then besides that i believe the only thing left to do then is you take these bracers and their color value three you also set to red because it's orange by default but i didn't have any of the other orange nova pieces out here so it looked weird oh actually these are beep perfect so now she's done and you can see we have max in everything so with your ship done there's only few more things to talk about so i will finish up this modification and i will walk around inside so you guys can check out the ship uh, while i talk about crew skills because crew skills are weird so hello the crew skills are not exactly the same as the player skills they are slightly different so when you enter this ship i'll do a little quick tour here you enter into the armory here so you've got this room which is like the lockup where you have weapon cases ammo cases storage bins lockers and then two mannequins out front and then this door will lead you into the rest of the ship so for instance here we have a nice little window viewing port in the side here you've got the command chairs in the center and then this ladder will lead straight up into the mm -hmm. workshop do you need something where everyone is hanging out right now for some like reason you. this is the docking hatch so if you are doing boarding that's where you'll go out and then this hatch leads into the back of the ship where you can see this is just the frontier hab that you start with um, but there are doors all over the sides from the bridges we put in bridge over here leads to the infirmary so you have access to your pharmaceutical lab as well as your research station right here and then other side leads into just a type b all-in-one which is very similar to the type a but you have beds in the corners here so actual sleeping space and then finally this is why we use the Nova, because the Nova Bridge has an actual staircase, the only staircase available in the ship builder, which I wish they would change, but for now, this is the only way you can do it. And you can see here the view from the Nova cockpit is fantastic, but this door leads over here into the captain's quarters, which the Nova captain's quarters is super snug. It's got this own little alcove here at the bed. Need something? classic Vosco sticking through the floor because they mount him to the outside of the ship and then you've got the workshop here that leads I back to this ladder going down. Together, always. so let's talk about some basics of the crew skills though and we'll use the actual menu to look at this so you look at your ship you hit crew you can see everyone when you assign someone to your ship the skills that affect the ship will glow. These don't always give you the same benefits the normal ones do. So for instance, the particle beam weapon systems, I have not, I've done testing and it does increase the damage because if you did not know, ship skills from companions stack with the player, but not each other. So if you have particle beam weapon systems, which I do, and Barrett is assigned as well, they will add their bonuses together but if you have a second crew member that also has particle beam weapon systems 
theirs won't benefit unless it's higher. It just picks the best skill available from a crew member and then adds it to yours. But they change some of the stats for companions. So for instance, this doesn't give you quite the damage bonus that you should get at level 3, but it does increase reload speed, which is weird because none of the particle beam weapon system skills for the player increases the reload speed, but his does. Another example of this is Sam Ko has piloting four. Now, you don't unlock B or C class ships from this, but you do get the bonus to mobility. And then also for him specifically, it adds a free power slot into your engines whenever he's on board. Um, same thing for Vasco. Vasco has shield systems too, but it doesn't increase the shield as much as uh, like it should for having that level of shield systems. I've also got, actually, Omari, you should also be assigned to a ship. Let me uh, unassign someone else from the ship because Andrea is my companion, so she'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, like, even though he's got higher shield skills, it doesn't actually give you more shields after this point. Like, the two to three jump doesn't happen. But it does look like it buffs the regen speed. So, it appears that there are secret effects to skills when it is a companion using them. I have not fully tested everything for figuring out what they exactly do, but what we do know is this. They do help. They do benefit you. So, like, feel free to use them. Like, assign crew members. But, unfortunately, the beyond the main cast, like the main constellation people, most of the other crew skills just don't do much. Because they come in three variants. You've got constellation people, which have full skills. Some and between one and two starship skills. You've got named NPCs, which are like people that are from different quests, or you'll just find them in bars and stuff, and they have an actual name. And they will give you bonuses as well, and usually like two star ones, like this guy here, or Amelia Earhart, or whoever. And then you have the unnamed one. Then you have the unnamed one-star ones, like, um, uh, if you go to a bar, you'll pe see people that are just called, like, energy weapon specialist, or power specialist, or jump drive specialist, and they will just have one-star skills, um, and they really aren't worth it, because you can find companions that have every starship skill you can need in two-star variants, so I guess they're there if you just really hate <laughs> the main cast and you just don't want them. But, yeah, so, wrapping that up, the skills do benefit. They're not the same as the player skills, though. They seem to have their own values, but until we have modding tools and people data mining this, we don't know exactly what they are. All right. And so, with that, I think that wraps up all of the points I've got here for talking Seems about good. ship building. So we'll just take this just so I can demonstrate this uh, power sleep. Okay. Orbital insertion done. Cool. Time to dance so you can see stars. here, uh, for one, our power bar is huge now, which is very funny looking. So I also have a mod on that I highly recommend that makes it so time slows down when you are changing power around, which is very nice, but not at all necessary to run this. So we're going to turn speed down. For those of you that did not pay attention during the flying tutorial, let me remind you again now, if you are having trouble spotting ships, keep your speed bar in the middle of that white bar you see down there next to the speed gauge. That is your mobility center, that is where your ship will have its best mobility. You can see, even here, with my engines way down, this thing still has a very high turning rate, and I can flip very quickly. So, 
allow me to demonstrate the effects of particle beams unpowered. Again, one power. These are doing full damage. And then I can just do that. And then take it out again. Now I won't hold it to drain it, because if you fully drain the power, you'll see the magazine will go from 100 now to zero. And then if I put another back in, it will have to recharge again. So you don't want to fully drain it, but it's very easy just to reload things and then just ignore the gun. Think this is the exact same mechanics actually that they have in um, uh, Star Citizen right now too, where like you use your energy to recharge the weapon. So if you're kind of playing on top of things, you just don't leave the power in the weapon. For missiles too, same thing. For missiles, you definitely want to fully power to recharge because uh, the reload time is already so long, it's awful. But a thing you can do is if you don't want to power your missiles at all, get those uh, either the Hunter mags or the SEO2s that have super high capacity, put one power point in, and then just, uh, you know, just pretend you only have one rack of missiles. You get to still shoot a ton of them, but again, I don't know how a fight will last that long. Like, if you're actually shooting the enemies and it's actually doing damage to them, like, things will get shredded by this much firepower in no time at all. But if I were to, like, play this normally, I usually just leave stuff on, like, 50% power engine somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, nah, that's, this is what I would play at. And you can see, ah yes, okay, so this actually does confirm a theory of mine. I have a free power point in shields right now, and I think that is from Omari Hassan being assigned in. So I think that a person with level 3 in a skill might, like for like the systems, like the uh, piloting for Sam Co or shields for Omari Hassan, I think it just gives you a free power point in it, which is pretty nice. Like, that's two free power pips now. And then I get an extra one for Vasco, so I'm at 41 total. Uh, so definitely use your crew skills out there, but, you know, decide if you actually want to go down the social tree to get crew management to get those extras. I think three is perfectly fine. But all right. I hope you all actually build some really nice ships out there. And definitely check out the Excel sheet if you want to see, like, good loadout options. But I will see you all next time with more ship builds, which I'm going to be doing for the